Uh, one, I want to really appreciate God for the opportunity that he has given to me uh, to be able to uh, work in his vineyard. Number two, Pastor Uche, thank you so much uh, together with uh, the church for the opportunity uh, of having me in, the, in this beautiful conference. I believe that God has a purpose every time he connects his people together from all walks of life. He has a purpose, and today God has a purpose. Uh, this month, God has a purpose for us, for you, for me, and for all of us. And he saw it fit for us to meet uh, virtually uh, at such a time as this. But the interesting thing is this, uh, that uh, the spirit of God still moves. God uh, is not limited uh, with where we are, with what we are going through in our environment. He is not limited and he can never be limited. And he's not going to start this week uh, to be limited. So I believe that God is going to speak to us. God is going to minister to us. All we need to do is just to open up our hearts, open up our life. The Bible says at the entrance of his word, there is light. Every mm -hmm. time the word of God is spoken, every time I read the word of God, every time we read the word of God, uh, there, there is light, there is light. I mean, sometimes you might think you are in the light and then you just discover that there is a greater light that has, has, has hit your life. I mean, you, it might even be a day broad, uh, you, in a, you are in a day broad light, but, but you discover something happens and, and there's this flicker that, that happens in your life. So as, a, as Christians, sometimes we, 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 we are in the light, but when we read the word of God, there is a greater light that hits our life. There is a revelation, there's an insight. And that insight comes to take us from one level to another. That's why God insists that we grow from glory to glory, from faith to faith. Why do we go from glory to glory? Why do we go from faith to faith? It's because every time we have an encounter with God, every time we have an encounter with Jesus, the light, I mean, our lives can never remain the same. So I believe, Pastor, uh, we, we, that this, this meeting, uh, as, as God has enabled you to uh, bring us together there is light that is coming into our lives i mean we are becoming better we are becoming stronger uh, i come to minister this morning but i believe that i'm coming also to tap in so much uh, from this great team uh, from you pastor because iron sharpens iron and i'm so glad that that i can connect with this great team i'm so glad that i can connect uh, with the grace uh, upon this uh, uh, this team upon you pastor because you are, you are gifted, you are anointed. Every man and woman of God that God has called, they are gifted and they are anointed and we can tap from them. So my, my heart is joy, overjoyed. My heart is glad uh, because I, I am in the right company and God is going to speak to me too, even as I minister. So it's an honor, Pastor. Amen, amen. Let, let me delve into the word of God this morning. Uh, Matthew chapter number 25. Matthew chapter number 25, that's the scripture uh, given. We are talking about a good and faithful servant. A good and faithful servant. Matthew chapter 25, I'm reading from verse number 14 to 30. The Bible says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into, uh, is a, man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. Uh-huh. Then it says, and to one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on to a journey. Let's continue. And unto one, uh, and, and then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them, and made them other five talents. Mm -hmm. Verse 17. And likewise, he, had that, he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his lost money. Look at that. He hid his lost money. Mm -hmm. After a long time, the Lord of, this, of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And uh, so... He that had received the five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five more. 
My goodness, 21. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into joy of thy Lord. 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Hmm. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Uh -huh. 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, my goodness, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. <laughs> and I was afraid, and I went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, thou hast that is thine. <laughs> His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked, thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strolled. Thou oughtest therefore to put my money to thy exchanges, and then at my coming I should have received my all with ashery. Uh, look at what is happening to him. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him that has ten talents. That's the first thing that happened to him. Number two, for unto everyone that has been given, uh, he, sh uh, he shall have abundance. But from him that has not, shall be taken away from that which he hath. That is. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Cast ye the unprofitable servant unto outer darkness. For there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This morning, uh, for the few minutes that we have, I want to start us off on the subject I've, I've entitled dealing with the unprofitable servant. If we are going to be called good and faithful servants, we must deal with every aspect in our lives that will cause us to be unprofitable. We must deal with every DNA in our system that will cause us to be unprofitable. We must deal with every attitude. We must deal with every character. We must deal with anything in our hearts, in our lives, that will cause us to be unprofitable. Look at what the master is, is saying in verse number 30, that cast the unprofitable servant into uh, out of this place. Cast him into outer darkness. Cast him out where where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. So in outer darkness, there, there, is, there is trouble. And cast him out. He's not profitable for the kingdom. And, 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 and my belief is, is we will not be this unprofitable servant. So I want us to, 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 to understand that God, God has called us to be profitable. God has called you to be profitable. God has called me to be profitable. God has called us all to be profitable. Uh, the Bible says that for the kingdom of heaven is likened. So the kingdom of heaven is into profit. The kingdom of heaven desires that you and I will walk in profitability. The kingdom of heaven desires that you and I will become, will become beneficial in our families, in our communities, in everything that we endeavor to do. If you look at the word of God, you discover that the word of God is full of scriptures that talk about profit. For example, Isaiah chapter number 48, verse number 17. Isaiah chapter number 48, verse number 17. The Bible says, Thus says the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to, be, to profit. The Lord does teach us to profit. I am the Lord thy God. I teach you to profit. I bring you to a place that you will be beneficial, not to yourself only, but to the community. And he says, I am the Lord that leadeth thee by the way that you should go. Every way that the Lord will lead you, my brother, every way that the Lord will lead you, my sister, is a way that will bring us to profit. When the, when the Lord 
spoke to Moses to bring the children of Israel from the, from the land of slavery into a prophet to, to Canaan. Uh, it was to profit their lives. I mean, he was bringing them from a place of slavery, a place of pain to a place. He says, he, told, he tells them that I'm taking you to the land that is flowing with milk and honey, a place that you can profit, you children of Israel, you can profit. I am the covenant keeping God. And because I am the covenant keeping God, I bring you to that place that you can benefit as a family, as a clan, as a people, as a generation. But you you understand that uh, the story very well, that, that the children of Israel could not take it in. They had too much uh, unbelief. They could not believe in the promise of God. Yet the promises of God are yes and amen. So God always leads us to profit. God always causes the wilderness to blossom if we hang unto him. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs chapter number three, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Because he's the law that teaches us to profit. The scripture is all about profit from Genesis to Revelation. God brings you and I to profit. He wants to profit your life. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers, because he's the law that always wants to profit your life. God is interested in causing us to profit. God is interested in causing us to succeed. God is interested in causing us to become fruitful like never before. He says, I am the vine. I am the vine. I mean, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, John chapter number 15, I mean, we become fruitful because we are abiding. God is interested with causing us uh, to be fruitful. So Isaiah chapter number 48 verse 17 says, I am the Lord that teaches you to profit. I am the Lord that enables you to profit. I am the Lord that guides you in the way that you can profit. I am the Lord that takes you from nothing uh, to a place uh, of profitability. I am the Lord that enables you uh, to come to a place that you see results. Every individual, you can testify that when you, you, you are not born again, there are things that are not going right in your life. When you are not born again, some of us could not even keep our families. Some of us could not feed our families. Some of us could not even keep our wives, our marriages, our husbands. Some of us could, could not even take care of our own selves. But immediately we got born again. What happened in our life? Since we were sensitive uh, to our lives, we were sensitive to the purpose of God in our lives. We, 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 become, we became men and women of vision. There are things we could not be able to do on the, uh, even on the natural sense. But, but because we, we, we received Jesus, because we connected with the Lord, something happened in our lives. We became fruitful in our communities. We became fruitful in our lives. I mean, some of us, uh, even, even our dressing changed because now we could be able to take care of our hygiene. We became profitable to say the least. God teaches us to profit. If you look at uh, Proverbs chapter number 14, verse 23, just trying to lay a foundation before we go to the scripture. It says that in all labor, there is profit because in all labor, there is profit because God desires us to profit. Proverbs chapter number 14, verse 23, in all labor, there is profit, but the talk of the lips uh, on the lips uh, tended only to penury in all labor, in all labor. And the truth of the matter is when you talk about it, all labor, labor that is in God, because there are people who are laboring and they are not in God. You realize that they, they come to vanity. The, the Solomon says it is vanity to rise up and to, and to sleep. It is vanity to work when God is not part and parcel of your life. So when I connect with God, ladies and gentlemen, God causes me to profit in all labor. There is profit. If you are serving in, a, in any department in church, I want you to understand in that labor, as you do it as unto the Lord, there is profit. Praise the name of the Lord. As you serve as unto the Lord, there is profit. If you're a minister, if you're a singer, if you're a national, if you're in the care ministry, whatever you do in all labor in the Lord, there is profit. Your life can never, ever remain the same 
Ah, I'm telling you, your family can never, ever remain the same. Peter one day stands up and tells Jesus, we have left everything. Lord, we have left everything and followed you. What does Jesus say? He says, no one that has left father and mother has left everything and followed me will go, will, will go to loss. I mean, they will receive. In this life, they will receive. And in the life to come, they will receive. Because you can never serve God and go at a loss. We can never serve God and go at a loss. We can never give our lives. We can never give our resources. We can never give our families to the Lord and go at a loss. Oh, the enemy sometimes will lie to people that you, you, there's no need of serving God. There's no need of dedicating your life to God. There is no need of praying or being passionate with the kingdom matters. But I want you to understand today that you can never serve God in all labor there is profit. In all labor in the kingdom of God, there is profit. Do you know one of the profit that you receive is a peace of mind? Because sometimes we think that the profit that we have is only monetary. But you see, one of the key things you need in life is peace. Mm. You can never keep that business if there's no peace. You can never keep that family if there is no peace. You can never keep yourself if there's no peace. But you see, when the peace of the Lord that surpasses all human understanding is part and parcel of your life that is the number one key profit that that that, that, that you cannot buy it anywhere in all labor there is profit <laughs> let me read to us one more scripture in Acts chapter number 20, if you can go with me in Acts chapter number 20, from verse number 19 uh, to 20, the Bible says, the Bible says like this, uh, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations, which befell me by the laying weight of the Jews. Verse number 20, where I want to go. This is Paul speaking. He says, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you. <laughs> God wants you to be profitable. And God will use his servants to keep back nothing. Paul is saying, I did not keep anything that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. Look at Paul. He's given an assignment by God and he's giving the, the believers. He's speaking to them. He's saying, I have showed you everything that is profitable unto you. Why? God wants you and I to be profitable. And so, therefore, he will reveal things to you. He will teach you things. He will teach me things. He will teach us things that are profitable to us because God is concerned concerning our lives. God is concerned concerning our ministry. God is concerned concerning our families and he wants us to be profitable and therefore he will bring forth his word. He will bring forth his oracle. He will bring forth his servants to be able to teach us to be profitable. Paul is saying, I did not hide anything that was profitable and i believe that this meeting it does not want to hide anything that is profitable everything that is profitable to you my sister profitable to you my brother this is a meeting that god wants to share with us that god wants to minister to us everything that is profitable everything that will take your family to another level will take your ministry to another level will take your life to another level god is saying that this is a meeting that he wants to he wants to share the secrets that he has for you. He wants to move us from being unprofitable to take away anything in our lives that will cause us to be unprofitable and to bring us to the reign of profitability for his own glory as he takes care of our lives, as he takes care of the ministry that he has given to us, as he takes care of the calling he has bestowed in our midst today. He wants to cause us to be profitable that at the end of the day, he will call you and I, thou good and faithful servant. You see, the goodness with our God is that he does not set us for failure. Oh yes. When God gives you a gift, he does not set you for failure. God provides a way for you and I to succeed. When God bestows a talent into your life, he does not expect, he does not do that to cause me to fail. 
When God anoints my life, he does not anoint me to fail. When God anointed David, he did not anoint David to fail. No, no, no. He anointed David to fulfill his, his work. He anointed David to fulfill his destiny. So when God has anointed you as a servant, uh, he does not anoint you for failure. He expects you to, to do as the occasion means you. Remember what, what Samuel told Saul. That when this, this anointing comes upon you, do as the occasion commands you to do. I mean, fulfill the purpose of this anointing. Fulfill the call of this anointing. Fulfill the ministry that has been given to you. God does not give us the gift to fail, my brother, my sister. God anoints us. God graces us. God gives us so that we can succeed. We can be a success story. And I believe that you and I, can become a success story. I believe you and I can, 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 can be read for generations and generations to come. The history books can be written concerning your life that there was a man, there was a woman that was anointed of God, was gifted in the marketplace, and he became an effective man and woman of God. He's a good and faithful servant according to the Lord's decree. Good. And faithful someone. So God desires us to profit. God desires you to profit. God desires me to profit. God desires that all of us will profit. God desires that we'll move from the realm of, 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 of loss to the realm that we are able to profit in Jesus' mighty name. He expects you to profit. Look at the scripture we have read. The Bible says that, that, that this Lord was going to a far country and he gave gifts to his people. He gave gifts to his servants. And I love because the Bible says he gave them according to their ability. Mm -mm. It's not according to how he loved them, but according to their ability. The Lord over these three people looked at their ability, assessed their ability, and he gave it to them according to their several ability. Verse number 15, according to their several ability. He asked, you see, you see, God knows you. God knows me, and he will not give me what I cannot be able to handle. He did not want to waste his gifts. He did not want to waste his talent. He says, unto one, he gave five, unto another, he gave two, unto another, he gave one, according to his several ability. So your ability dictates the number of talents you can handle, the number of talents you, we can handle from God. So I will, I should never be jealous concerning somebody else who has the talents, who has five or has two or has one, because it's according to my ability. He gave them according to their ability. Your ability dictates the weight of the talent you have. Your ability dictates. It is not according to God's ability. He says, according to their ability. Ephesians chapter number three, verse 20. Now, unto God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask, think, or even imagine. But there is a last part we always forget. Unto God. I mean, I've, I've had people quoting that scripture. Unto God that is able to, to, to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And we leave it there. Yes, God is able to do. But the last part, which is very powerful, it says, according to the power that works in us, that worketh in us, according to the ability, according to the capacity. So, so God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think, according to that power power that works in us what is my ability what is my capability how far am i able to see god is able to do more than i can be able to see but how far am i able to stretch myself to believe in god how far am i able to stretch myself to look unto god and say lord as far as as my eyes can see, that's how far I am stretching my faith. As far as my eyes can see, that's how far I am believing God. God speaks to Abraham and says, 
as far as your eyes can see. I'm able to do beyond what your eyes can see. But if I do beyond what your eyes can see, you cannot be able to handle. So how far can you see? My brother, how far are you seeing? He says, according to their ability, I cannot become a very good, this thing that I believe in, yet my ability does not enable me to do so. I need, therefore, to stretch my ability. I need to expand expand my capability. I need to work on myself so that God can do according to my ability. God can give me things according to my ability. For example, if you're only able to handle one dollar, why are you believing for five dollars? <laughs> if you're only able to handle one estate, why do you think you're praying to handle five estates? It will be a waste. If you're only able to handle uh, small, small money, wh why, do, wh why are you looking forward for, for, for bigger sum of money? If you're only able to handle one ministry, why do you want to be, to, to be given charge over two, three, four ministries? According, he gave them according to their ability. God will not waste he will always give us according to our ability. He's not a wasteful God. He will always give us according to our ability. So you and I have work to do. We need to work on our ability to handle the blessing of God. We need to work on our ability and capability. We need to increase our hearts. We need to increase the space within us. How can we handle the blessings of God? Mm. It's so good. He says, he gave them according to their ability. I, I, I wish the person who was given one had, had worked on himself. He could have received the five talents. But when, 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 the, when the master, when the Lord over their lives, he looked at them. That means he had been watching them. Ladies and gentlemen, somebody is watching you. It was not just the twinkling of an eye. I mean, when, when I meet you for, for the first time, I, I cannot be able really to, to assess your ability. I must stay with you for a while. We must, we must work together. And, and they were working together. So, so somebody is watching him. Yes, you think no one is noticing what you're doing. Somebody is watching. Oh, yes. <laughs> you, you might be serving in the secret, but somebody is watching. One day, somebody will tell you, I have been watching you for a while. I've discovered you are talented in one, two, three things. Somebody is watching. Don't lie to yourself that whatever you're doing, no one is watching. Even when you think no one is watching, the Lord is watching. <laughs> oh, yes. The Lord is watching. And at the end of the day, he's the one who will know how much you are able to handle. Oh, yes. Do you know even in terms of temptation, he says that there is no temptation that has come upon you that you cannot be able to handle. Somebody is watching your ability, my friend. <laughs> Somebody is watching. According to the ability, you are going to be blessed according to your ability. You've got to stretch it. You're going to be given your ministry. You're going to be given your ability to see, to serve according to your ability, not what can be able to crush you according to your ability. So stretch yourself. When God blessed Peter with an abundance of a harvest after toiling the whole night, what happened to his life? He discovered that he does not have the ability uh, to hold to this blessing. So he called people, he called his friends so that they can be able to receive the blessing too. Because our God is too much, my friend. Oh, our God is too much. And, and, and he will bless you according to your ability. So, so God gave them according to their ability. But the interesting thing is this, that the one, the one who was given five went and did what was necessary with the five. He traded. The one who was given two, he went and did trade with it and brought two more. The one who was given five brought five more. The one who was given one, yet he had the ability to handle one. He was envious. <laughs> and you see, that is the problem we have in church. That, I mean, you are envious. And, and look at what he says. He says, I know you, Lord, because you, you reap where you do so. My friend, by the way, who gave him the talent? It was the Lord. How, how come he's telling that, the Lord that you are a hard man? How hard was that? One, it was your ability. 
I assessed your ability. I gave you one because you are able, only able to handle one. How do you call me? I mean, that is, that is not fair. That is not fair at all. How do you call me unjust man? How do you call me a hard man? Yet, I looked at your ability. The talent was not yours. The talent was mine. I gave it to you. I gave it to you. Yet, you call me a hard man. Yet, you call me a man that doesn't care. He said, I wish you could have done something better with my talent than just burying it. I wish you could have seen beyond now. <laughs> he says, you are a hard man. You reap where you have not sown. Yet the truth of the matter is that what this guy had, he was given free. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord is not a hard man. Hmm. He will give you and I according to your ability. Sometimes we go into prayer and we say, Lord, I wish you could have given me a gift like so and so. Oh, Lord, I wish you could have blessed me like so and so. Oh, Lord, you are unfair. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God, anoint me like so and so. Oh, God, why? Why did you release it to so and so and not me? And God is saying, why are you not dealing with the one I have given to you according to your ability? Why are you always on the complaining mode? Why are you always uh, uh, comparing yourself with so and so? Why are you calling me unfair? Yet according to your ability, I have given you one. Work on the one and let's see what I will do with you after you are faithful with the one. Let me give us some myths about being unprofitable. Why are people calling? Why do people reach a place and they become unprofitable. Number one myth is they, they say, I am not gifted. Have you ever heard of that? Oh, I wish I was gifted. I could have done better if I only I was gifted. Oh, I'm telling you, I could have reached the world if only I was gifted. And this man looked at the talent and despised it and said, I was not gifted. I was not given the talent. So I, he hid it because he thought it was not given. It was not fair that the other one was given five. The other one was given two and was given one. Most people become up unprofitable because when they look at the gift that they have, they say that they are not gifted. When they look at the resources that God has given to them, they thrash the resource. They thrash their gifting. When they compare their gift with others, they say, I don't think I was gifted. This man messed up because he didn't value the one talent he was given. How many of us become a profitable because we don't value the talent we have been given? It looks insignificant, but ladies and gentlemen, it's still the talent. Hmm. We say, I am not gifted. The master gave to them talents and left the city. All of them were gifted. Ladies and gentlemen, all of us are gifted. You are gifted. Mm -hmm. As insignificant as you think that talent is, because some of us, we know that we are gifted when we are, we, we are this, this big. That's when we realize that we are gifted. But you see, as insignificant as you think, because, and that's the word I'm using, as insignificant as you think that gift is, you are gifted. But according to the eyes of God, it's not insignificant. That is the gift, that is the talent that will take you to another level of glory. If only you'll put that talent to work. Another myth of being and profitable is that I am out of time. Hmm. This man, when he thought that he's not gifted, that he cannot work on his gift and comparing himself with others who had five or who had two, he, he thought that he's out of time. Look at it. So many people, when it comes 
to making prophets. They say, I'm out of time. When it comes to serving in the kingdom of God, they bring about the age factor. I am out of time. Oh, I am so old. I cannot serve God. Oh, I'm so young. I cannot serve God. I'm out of time. I'm out of time. I don't have time for God. The master, <laughs> the master gave them the talent and went. They had all the time to do whatever they wanted to do to this gift. They had all the time. Ladies and gentlemen, we have all the time. All of us have the 24 hours, seven days in a week. We have the whole year to deal and to make sure that we become profitable in the kingdom of God. As much as you do whatever you do, whether in the country, out of the country, wherever you are, you have all the time to make sure that you're profitable in the kingdom of God. Most people say they cannot be profitable in the kingdom of God because they don't have time. I mean, as a pastor, pastor people, some of them tell me, oh, pastor, I'm out of time. Oh, pastor, I cannot do it, that. I don't have time. I wish, I wish I had time. Pastor, I wish I had, I had time for fellowship. You call for a fellowship meeting. They tell, I wish I had time. Oh, I'm so busy before I do this, before I do that, before I do that. I don't have time. I will try and see what I can be able to do. You see, one of the things we are doing as a church this, this month is we are, we, we are talking uh, concerning fast things fast. In Matthew chapter number 6, verse 33, the Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. And we are saying first things first. I must make time for the kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, we must make time for the kingdom. We must wake early for the king of kings. We must connect with the Lord of Lords. We must make time for evangelism. We must make time for soul winning. We must make time for personal nourishment. We must make time. We must have a personal time. A quiet time with the Lord. We must make time. We cannot be too busy for the things of God. We cannot be too busy for the kingdom. No way. I know we are, no, we are looking for daily bread, but at the end of the day, God tells us, what shall we eat profit us? What shall we eat profit us if we gain the whole world and lose our soul? What shall it profit us, ladies and gentlemen, if we do all that we are doing and we, we lose our soul? We must make time, ladies and gentlemen. We must make time for the king of kings we must make time for the lord of lords we must make time for the giftings and the callings of god that he has given to us for us to profit the kingdom of god most of us are not profitable you say, you say because we say i don't have time when it comes to the things of god we don't have time when it comes to our things we have all the time look at it when it comes to entertainment all of us have the time mm -hmm. Those of us who love football, even when World Cup is in the middle of the night, people who cannot go for an overnight, <laughs> they have all the time. They have all the time. They, they can wake up at 2 a.m. They can wake up at 3 a.m. When it, but when it comes to the things of God, we don't have the time. Most people are unprofitable in the kingdom of God because they tell themselves, I am out of time. Oh. I'm too old. I'm too young. It, it is not my time. Have, have you, I don't know if you have ever had somebody say, I don't think it's my time. I know God is calling me, but, but I don't think it's my time. I, I, I know God has gifted me, but, but I don't think it's my season. I, I know I can sing, but I don't think it's my time. I know I can do this for the kingdom, but I don't think it's my time. So they miss out on what God has called them. They don't become profitable because they bring the issue of time. I pray that you and I will not bring up the issue of time when it comes to the kingdom of, kingdom of God. The Bible says he gave them the talents and he went away. He gave them the time. He gave them the time. You see, ladies and gentlemen, God has given us the time. His masses are new every morning. Why? Because he has given us today to become profitable. At the end of today, you and I must be profitable in the name of Jesus Christ. And because the unprofitable servant lost, number one, uh, lo, lo, uh, number one had the, had the excuse of the time, had the excuse of the gift, he, he lost three things. Number one, 
He lost the talent. He lost the talent. What he was given, he lost it. If we become unprofitable, we will lose our talent. We will lose our gifting. That which that was given to us to cause us to become better, we will lose it. So we must deal with every aspect that causes us to be unprofitable. Verse number 30. The Bible says, <laughs> uh, verse number, not 30. It says, take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him that has ten, ten talents. He lost the talent. When we are unprofitable, we lose the talent. We lose the effectiveness of the gift. That which we could use, we lose it. There are so many people who have lost the talent. Yes, sir, the Bible says, take it from him. I mean, I gave it to him. Take it from him. I gave it to him. Take it from him. Verse number 28. Take therefore the talent from him. Take it from him. He lost the talent because he was unprofitable. I pray that you will not lose the talent because you are unprofitable. Don't bury the talent, my brother. Don't bury the talent, my sister. Don't lose it. Come on. Tell yourself from today. Encourage yourself from today that I won't lose it. I won't lose it. I won't lose it. I won't lose it. Take it from away from him. Number two, he lost his position. He says, cast him into outer darkness. He lost his position. He lost his position. Oh. Cast him into outer darkness. Verse number 30. Cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. He lost his position. When we become unprofitable, Servants, we lose our position. And that's why you discover that people start struggling. Oh, <laughs> they struggle. They say, you know, I was here. I came first. We were the founders. We were this. We did this. We did this. But because you are not profitable, you lose your position. And you are amazed. How come they came so, uh, they came, they have taken our position. They have taken our seats. Oh, now uh, are they the only ones who are being used of God? They lost their position. Cast him. I mean, there are people that are ready and willing to cast you into outer darkness to take your position. He lost his position because he was unprofitable. I pray that you will not lose your position. I pray that you will not lose your place because you are profitable. You are profitable. You and I are profitable. Thank God for pastor bringing this meeting together uh, this month uh, to cause us to be profitable. Oh, I will not lose my position. Uh, I choose that I will be profitable. Uh, you will always tell yourself every morning you wake up, every time you have an opportunity to serve the Lord, you say, I will be profitable today more than I was profitable yesterday because I will not lose my talent. I will not lose the effectiveness of my gifting and I will not lose my position. Number three, he lost his life. <laughs> he lost his life. Verse number 30. <laughs> Cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness where there shall be gnashing of teeth. Cast him out. Cast him out to a place of pain. Oh, he lost his life. He lost his joy to a place of gnashing of teeth. Right there, where there is pain. That's where he went. <laughs> you see, talent is what attracts provision. When you lose your talent, you lose provision. When you lose your talent, when you lose your gifting, what makes you to be afloat is your talent, is your gifting. What can you bring on the table? And God gives to you and I the talent and the gifting so that you can become somebody that cannot be tossed to and fro. The gifting of God makes you to attract provision. A man with a gifting, a man with a vision attracts provision. When you lose that talent, when you lose that drive, when you lose that gift, you have lost provision. 
We can pray with you as much as we can. But when you lose it, you have lost provision. You have lost, lost the ability to attract provision. You have lost the ability to attract providence. When he lost his talent, he lost his ability to attract providence. And that's why nothing could be, have been added to him. Say, so take it from him and give it to another. The one that had five attracted provision for one more. <laughs> May you not lose your talent. When you lose your position, you lose an opportunity to attract opportunities. When you lose your position, you lose your opportunity to attract opportunities. You attract opportunities because you are in a particular position. When you position yourself in God, you attract opportunities. Don't lose your position because you are unprofitable. When you lose your life, you lose the guarantee of your future. When you lose your life, you lose the guarantee of your future. This guy lost the guarantee of his tomorrow because he lost his life. Don't lose your life because you are unprofitable servants. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to wrap it up from there. And I want to, I want to pray with you that today you will decide. I am dealing with every aspect that causes me to be unprofitable in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for this first day of this meeting. Father, forgive us for the days we have been unprofitable. Forgive us for the days we have not put our hands on the plow and served you as you called us to serve you. Forgive us for the days that we have belittled the talent you gave unto us. Today, we come back on track and we pray that help us, guide us, lead us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Help us to become profitable servants to the glory and honor of your name. We worship you. We honor you. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Back to you, Pastor.